Hello everyone and welcome to Melon Talks. Here I'm going to be talking about common Zyra mistakes. And this is slightly prompted by seeing all the Zyra play at Worlds. Um, but mostly it's it's been an idea that I've had in my head for a while. And I, I've done a video on this before, but I wanted to make a more updated one with the Melon Talks format. So uh, I'm not necessarily flaming the pros who are, who are better than I am, but not... They make some silly Zyra mistakes as well, okay? So here we're gonna be talking about some common mistakes that Zyra players do, why they're bad, maybe what to do instead. So you can kind of get an idea of saying, okay, you know, maybe maybe I can improve on this or, or oh, yeah, you know, I never really thought about that. So that it's, it's pointing out mistakes to help you improve, okay? So the first mistake I, and this is probably by far the most prominent mistake is, is doing your seed combos in the wrong order. So the common mistake is that doing a WQ instead of a QW and, and likewise with E, right? So the idea is that you want to spawn, you don't want to put your seed down first. You want to start the animation for your Q and then put the seed down at the very end. And why is this good? This is good because it gives you a lot more options, okay? Because you know, notice that the actual reticule for the Q is very, very large, okay? You can spawn in a huge amount, but your actual W casting range is pretty small. So there's two advantages to QW combo instead of an, a WQ combo. The first is that, you know, once you spawn a Q on an enemy, they're gonna run away of course. So if you do a QW, it gives you time to move the seed and spawn the plant right on top of them. All right. So in addition, right, because your W is not that long of a range, if you're chasing somebody, and I do this all the time, there's some really nice highlights. Maybe I'll put one in the video over here. Um, is uh is it lets you get bigger range out of your plant so if you q walk forwards and then w at maximum range you can get a plant that's much much further away than if you just initially w q all right so those are the two reasons one you can actually put the seed right on where they are if they're dodging away and two you can get a much much bigger range out of your plants the second mistake that I see very often is people will do double E plants. So think E W W combo. And I hate, absolutely hate double E plants because the slows don't stack and the E plants have ridiculously small range. Okay. Um, if you're using an E plant on someone, you're probably only going to get like one, maybe two attacks on them. And it's mostly just to apply the slow, not to actually have the plant do, do anything meaningful in a longer fight. Um, the only exception to this is maybe when, when the enemy team is all diving through you and you can set up some E plants so that, you know, they have to, they have to dive through you. But even if you do that, if you want to have two E plants, that can be okay in certain circumstances, but don't put them right on top of each other, which is again, the very common thing. What you want to do then is E put one like near you. And then also one at the far end of your of your E as well. So that at least if you're gonna have two E plants, you spread them out so you can get a lot longer slow duration in the uh, if people are diving into you and, and stuff like that. All right. So if you're gonna EWW, do that. But otherwise, you should just you should always save a seed for your Q. Your Q plants have much, much longer range. They're gonna be able to do a lot more damage, and people are not gonna just stand in your E plant, okay? So one E plant's okay, two almost never okay. But if you're gonna do two E plants, make sure to space them out in your when you when you do use your E. All right, don't put them right on top of each other. The third big mistake, um, and this is more recent, and I haven't made a video exclusively about this, so this is where I'm gonna talk about it. But it's buying Rylize too early, and too early for me personally is ever. Okay, so I hate Rylize right now. I think Rylize is, is pretty bad on Zyra, okay? Um, there are some times when you should buy it, but I'm gonna tell you first why it was good before and what its uses are now and, and some alternatives, okay? So I bought it before because it gave a 40% slow on your plants, which is incredible. This, this helped you get uh, picks, it helped you engage, it helped you disengage, it helped you run away, you know? Uh, and it was a 40% slow on your plants in addition to the same, you know, 40% slows on all of your spells as well, which we still have. But now we only have the 40% slow on our Q, which, you know, it can be useful, maybe. Um, on our E, which is useless, and on our ultimate, which is nice. Uh, 
granted uh the 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 40 percent slot on our ultimate the damage from our ultimate is very nice and it helps prepare people to get the knockup okay so but now we only have 20 percent slow on our plants and 20 percent is almost nothing um with a 40% slow, we could completely only use Q plants. We didn't need E plants anymore, which is nice because we get basically making our E plants have much more range by only using Q plants to get that 40% slow instead of the E plants 35% slow. Okay, um, but a 25% 20 slow is almost nothing. If you actually use it on a champion, you'll notice, oh my gosh, this champion's like moving almost the exact same speed or something like that, okay? Um, so it's it's basically useless for your plants it's still good with ultimate and it's still good with ludens echo because the ludens echo proc does proc um uh spell and item effect so it will proc your leandries and it classifies as an aoe damage thing for your rylize so if you have ludens you can also get rylize and then you will have that aoe 40 percent slow on your plant attacks which is very very good okay so if you're going to get rylize right now i highly suggest you do it in mid lane and do it after ludens echo um i initially when this patch change came out i said you should you should not get it mid lane and you should get it support but after thinking about it i think it makes more sense the other way get it mid but make sure to do it after after ludens and only if you want a poke build as opposed to a burst build or damage over time uh because it's pretty bad for both of those uh and but as a support i don't really i don't really see a time to get it so what are we the third part about this rally section what are we giving up for all right think of think about this so it's 3200 gold which is very very expensive it's the second it's like the second most expensive ap item out of sight of death cap i mean there are a few 3200 items okay so it's very expensive and it gives 400 health and 100 ability power so 400 health is actually is quite nice for zyre support um but not like incredibly nice uh you know 400 health we're so squishy that we're probably still gonna die pretty quickly um but you know that that yeah sure it's it's okay and then 100 ability power is average um if other items we're getting is you know gonna be pretty close to that so specifically i want to look at as a support void staff zonyas and ludens echo as a mid lane you can basically everything you can get is better than Rylize unless you're going for that annoying poke build with Ludens first. Okay, so here I'm just this itemization part. I'm only going to be talking about support because for mid lane there's so many better options um, that we don't even consider. But for support, I'm making the case why you shouldn't go utility with Rylize and should get one of these other items in most cases. All right. So the thing I do personally most of the time is Void Staff. It's 550 gold cheaper, gives 80 ability power and 35% magic penetration, okay? And and sure, it sounds, oh, man, that sounds a little weaker, but if you actually run the numbers, and I like to do this, if you actually run the numbers, Void Staff gives you, I think, a, approximately two times as much damage per gold spent as Rylize does. So again, we're not getting Rylize for the damage, we're getting it for the, the, the health and, and the slows, but again, the slows aren't that useful anymore except for your ultimate and and the health is is kind of mediocre i think for a support um you know I, i'm okay dying as long as i can get my job done so i like staying safe in the back line putting my my gold in the void staff and being able to tear through their team because void staff gives you an insane amount of damage void staff and leandries give so much damage for how much gold they cost okay but even if you wanted something else, you could also look at Zhonya's, which is also cheaper, 300 gold cheaper. It gives 30 less ability power, which, you know, eh, that's a fair amount, but it's not going to make or break any fights, probably. 45 armor, which can be very, very good. So 45 armor, it's not going to save you from like, you know, uh, it's not going to save you from like an Aurelia or, or something like that. Anyway, I don't know where I'm going with that. My point is the 45% armor counters the these very popular armor pen builds that are going on remember magic pen and armor pen are better the the less armor and mr you have so if my enemy team has like a Jin and a wukong and a zed or something and they're just stacking armor penetration the best thing i can do is just get a little bit of armor to slot to stop that exponential 
um, benefit they're getting from their armor pen. So 45 armor will actually go a very long way against these armor pen champions. If you're against like normal AD champions, the 45 armor is not really going to do that much for you. And then again, more pro probably more importantly is the 10% CDR, which is very, very nice because I don't, I don't like to get a lot of CDR as Zyra support. I mean, I, I like to get CDR. I don't feel like I can really afford to get it though. And, um, and it's very nice to have that extra CDR, mostly for your ultimate. Um, because your ultimate's a very long cooldown, and I usually only get 10% CDR with my gold gen item. Or, or maybe, yeah, basically it. Unless I'm in like a really passive mode, and I might get run scaling CDR, but usually I prefer my full penetration page. So the CDR is actually very useful. And then there's the active, and this active, it allows you to play a different style. You can, you can be more aggressive. You can look more for picks because if you snare an ult, and again, you probably wouldn't have time to do a full combo, but maybe just an EWR combo before your Zhonya's, you can Zhonya's and allow your team to follow up. Um, again, this is very situational, but it allows you more freedom in your play style as Zyra. Um, all right. So I, in fact, I, I like Zhonya's a lot more to, to play more aggressively as opposed to keeping me more safe. So I think of it more as an aggressive item for myself personally. All right, so that's Zhonya's. Uh, very, very, very good now uh, with the changes giving it CDR and um, making it cheaper. And especially with the, the popularity of all these armor pen builds. And the last, uh, you know, big alternative for Zyra support for Rylai's is Ludin's Echo. Uh, I, this item is very hit or miss. Again, I say this every video, you do not buy Ludin's Echo for burst. You buy Ludin's Echo for poke and movement speed. If you want burst, get magic penetration, all right? Or ability power. But uh, Ludin's Echo gives you a lot of movement speed, which is very nice in helping you position. It helps you land your poke. It helps you not get caught out. It's The movement speed is actually very, very underrated when, when thinking about Ludin's Echo. 100 ability power is, is nice. And the poke is the the poke from Ludin's Echo is actually so good against squishy targets. Again, poke is pretty bad against shield, sustain, and tanks. But against squishy targets with no sustain, this Ludin's Echo will do so much, especially if you're getting it after Leandries. And if you get Ludin's Echo, feel free to go Rylai's afterwards because then then they Ludin's Echo, Leandries, and Rylai's are an insane poke combination. But I really like getting Rylai's last in that in that combination now. All right, so that, yeah, that's basically it. I think Rylai's is uh, incredible, the most, the single most overrated item in League of Legends right now. On certain champions, like for instance, Victor, uh, Vladimir, it can be a really, really good, but people are buying it on, on like Karma and all sorts of weird champions where it makes almost no sense to do so. Uh, and I, it boggles my mind, okay? Uh, but that's a different rant. All right, uh, and it's getting nerfed or changed or something anyway, so it's not even worth talking about. Let's move on. Point number four, uh, common mistakes is not using seeds for wards. Uh, this was actually buffed in 6.9 in the mid-year mage update. Now they last 60 seconds. One seed gives about as much vision, I think, as a blue trinket, because uh, it gives you that little burst when you place it, and then a smaller long term, as well as uh, revealing people when they step on it. Remember, your passive doesn't reveal people or give vision, but your W seeds still do. Okay, and again, if you're if you're maybe mid lanes that are putting it in the middle of the lane brush might not be so helpful, but um, a, this is maybe especially important for for support or top lane Zyra because the tri brush is actually much smaller and you can illuminate basically the entire thing with your W. Not to mention if you're against something like a Zac or something, it allows you to ward far across walls. Like right, if you're on blue side, right above the river to the enemy enemy's tri brush is very, very good against Zac and Shaco and you can actually get that. And you can uh, see a video of that in my tips and tricks section in my Zyra support guide. Uh, video guide on YouTube, which information is below the link. Okay, so seeds for words are great um, They last 60 seconds, which is fantastic uh, Obviously, you know use your seeds for damage and you know You can rotate your trinket between you and your AD carry, but sometimes your AD carry does a ward uh, So you can do that and mid lane honestly, I I haven't found as good of a as good of a way to do this in mid lane, but something that can be really nice, but only if you have pressure mid lane, is if you can drop a seed over onto the enemy's wraiths, 
that can be very, very good. Or if you think the enemy is in your jungle, you can put it on your wraiths. Uh, it's very, very helpful, especially against something like an Evelyn or such. And again, since it reveals champions, uh, it, it is also good against stealth champions. Well, because I don't think, I'm pretty sure if they're stealthed, it won't reveal them. Like Twitch or something, if he steps on your seat, it won't show him. I should actually check, uh, test this. But you can, you can still see it get stepped on. All right, so you have to be paying attention. And I do need to check that. Um, all right, so that's number four. Number five is kind of the opposite. It's using both seeds too often. Far too often, uh, I'll see Zyra players use both seeds in lane, which can be okay under the right circumstances. Oh, you found your glasses, nice. Which can be okay in the right circumstances, but you have to know when it's safe to do so because if you use both of your seeds, you're like a Blitzcrank who just throws out his hook. Blitzcrank throws out his hook, he's useless for what, 15 seconds or whatever? Uh, Zyrus Seeds, I think have a 20 second cooldown, level one W or something, it's insane. If you use both of your seeds, you're basically saying, hey guys, I'm a free kill, come at me. Uh, which is usually not, not so good to do. All right, so you can, uh, usually you wanna have two seeds in your, in, your, in your stockpile, and then use one to harass, usually to get Thunderlord's Decree, and then save that seed for if the opponent starts trading back at you. And if you're getting something really, really passive, uh, usually something like a like a Twisted Fate mid sometimes, or or like a Janna support, or, uh, you can use both seeds just to like break through a shield or get some extra harass, and that can be okay, uh, as long as you're not at risk of getting traded back onto. And again, remember when you're using both seeds, that multiple seeds attacking the same target only do 50% damage. So. If you're using two seeds, you're not doubling your damage output, you're multiplying it by 1.5. All right, so again, it's usually better to use one at a time. Um, and it also allows you more safety, especially if the enemy team decides to aggress on you while you are trading, okay? And that kind of brings me into my next point of, uh, of you don't want to be aggressive 100% of the time. You want to be aggressive when you have your the support of your AD carry, which may or may not happen, when you know where the enemy team is, so you should always be thinking, all right, where's their jungler, where's their mid laner, stuff like that, do they have a teleport ward? Um, usually I like to, um, or support, if your mid lane supports roam the most out of any anything, so if your mid lane always be thinking about where their support is, don't, don't blame your team if they don't call MIA. Them calling MIA helps you be aware, but it is your responsibility to always be aware of where people are. Honestly, just get into the habit of looking at your mini map. It's not that hard. Uh, I mean, I have the pro I do it too. I'm also, you know, also at fault, but don't blame other people for your, your lack of awareness. If people call MIA, that's great. If they don't, it's still your fault. Always look at your map every once in a while. Especially as if you're support Zyra, uh, you don't have that much to do. Look at your map, help people out, uh, give pings. All right, that's a small side rant, okay? Uh, so you you only want to be aggressive when you when you can. Uh, if you're if you're poking and you di and you die and you say, oh man, my AD carry didn't follow up, and you know you start flaming him. You know, I you know I do that too sometimes. Uh, it can be frustrating, but just realize, okay, if I'm going to be aggressive, I need to tell people I'm being aggressive. Um, if I want to be trading a lot mid and I know their jungler might come, I'll say, hey, I'll ask my jungler and wait for my jungler and say, hey, I'm going to be aggressive. I think I think I might get ganked. You can get a really sweet counter gank, free double kill for you. Uh, and you know, junglers love that. Jungler, junglers like free double kills. Communicate with your jungler honestly about what Man, I'm going off so many so many tangents today. Communicate with your jungler honestly about what he or she can can achieve. Uh, it's one of the best ways to do it. Communication in general really underrated in League of Legends. Um, um, but uh, where was I? Um, so don't overextend. Don't be aggressive all the time. A lot of the times, most of your trading patterns will will revolve around your Thunderlord's proc. So, uh, which is 30, no, it used to be 30 seconds. I think it's smaller now. And your seed spawn is 20 seconds at level one W, all right? So that's what you're gonna play around mostly. So you're usually gonna have one seed in reserve at least and play around Thunderlords. Be always aware of overextending on the map, all right? 
So the last thing I want to talk about, the last big mistake I see is when a team fight begins, people usually just smash their buttons, smash their keyboards and spawn everything all at once. And this, there's a lot of problems with this because you're not using your spells intelligently. Um, for instance, this is my favorite example because uh, it happens a lot. Zach is, Zach is very, very common nowadays. And if a Zach just jumps at you, you don't want to just use all your spells, including your ultimate on the Zach. You know, that can maybe provide a little bit of peel, but his AOE is going to kill the plants really quickly. The enemy team is going to be able to follow up very easily. What's much better usually when a Zach is engaging, you know, as long as he doesn't hit you, is you actually move to the side of the Zach and pop your plants and your seeds, like maybe like maybe even a QWW combo in between the Zach and the rest of his team. And you can use your ultimate to buy your team like three seconds at least of time just to peel back and deal with the Zach. Zyra's role in a team fight, and this is a previous Melon Talks video if you wanna check it out, team fighting. Zyra's role in a team fight is very dynamic and it's not always just straight up using your spells to do damage. Sometimes using your spells to keep people out of the fights, buys you time to take down their tanks, stuff like that can be really, really good. So don't just, smash your face on your keyboard every time a fight breaks out think okay what, what do i really need to do here do i need to save my e for an assassin that's going to be jumping in or should i use my e on the tank to save my ad carry okay is my ad carry fed all right i'm going to peel for the ad carry does my ad carry suck all right i'm going to go try to deal with their team more more personally stuff like that all right and again, especially in team fights, be very, very careful about using two E plants. Or if they have an incredible amount of AOE, you may want to just wait a little bit to use your seeds at all. Um, because if your seeds get instantly killed by Morgana W, Rumble Q, uh, you know, any number of things that can instantly kill your plants, you're actually just wasting them. Uh, and it can actually be better to save things, especially with your seeds in your E. In general, when playing League of Legends, you should save them more often than not. It's very tempting to just use spells when they're up, but it's much, much more effective if you save things for the perfect opportunity. And what I can, what I find it can be helpful is don't rely on your instinct to do all this get ready before a team fight. Like 90% of the time, this is again, a small side tangent. If you see people like flash a Malphite ultimate, they're not just like hanging around and all of a sudden they see the Malphite ultimate and they flash. They're walking around thinking, okay, Malphite could flat, he could ultimate me right here. I'm going to be ready with my flash. It's a cons it's a conscious thought. Similarly, when you play Zyrus, oh my, oh, oh I just terrified myself. I record this on OBS and Sony Vegas. Vegas has my audio because my OBS is broken with my audio. And I had my microphone muted on OBS from a stream yesterday. And I thought I had wasted this entire time not having audio, but we're okay. Oh dear. So, uh, oh, oh dear, what, what was I talking about? I'm very scatterbrained today. Um, I think I was talking about not blowing everything. It's definitely had a, Definitely was going somewhere. I'm going to stop the video and find out where I was. No, I'm not. I think that's pretty much it. Thank you everyone for watching. Let me know if you have any questions. You can find me below. I'm everywhere, Twitter, Twitch, Reddit, more places, check out the links. I am getting sick, so I'll probably be streaming the next few days without a microphone because it kind of hurts to talk. As you can see, my brain is not all there. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below or on my stream. And may your enemies feel the thorns embrace.